Hello, today we'll be going through practice questions 91 to 100 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. A security administrator needs to import PII data records from the production environment to the test environment for testing purposes. Which of the following would best protect data confidentiality? The correct answer is A. Data masking. Data masking is the best method to protect the confidentiality of PII when transferring production data to a test environment. It obscures sensitive fields while preserving the format and usability of the data for testing purposes. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Hashing. Hashing is one way and renders the data unusable for functional testing because it's not reversible or readable. C. Watermarking. Watermarking is used to prove ownership or track data usage, not to protect confidentiality. D. Encoding. Encoding transforms data for format or transport purposes, but it does not provide security or confidentiality. Therefore, the correct answer is A. The email system administrator for an organization configured DKIM signing for all email legitimately sent by the organization. Which of the following would most likely indicate an email is malicious if the company's domain name is used as both the sender and the recipient? The correct answer is A. The message fails a DMARC check. A DMARC failure indicates that the email failed both SPF and or DKIM checks, meaning it was not properly authenticated even though it claims to come from the organization's domain. This is a strong indicator of a spoofed or malicious email, especially if the sender and recipient are the same domain. Why the other options are incorrect? B. The sending IP address is the hosting provider. This may be legitimate, depending on your infrastructure. On its own, it doesn't indicate malicious intent. C. The signature does not meet corporate standards. Not meeting corporate standards is vague and not necessarily tied to authentication failure. Only a failed DKIM signature would be a red flag. D. The sender and reply address are different. This can be used in phishing, but it's also common in legitimate email workflows. It's not a definitive indicator of a malicious email. Therefore, the correct answer is A. During an incident involving phishing, a security analyst needs to find the source of the malicious email. Which of the following techniques would provide the analyst with this information? The correct answer is A. Header analysis. Email header analysis allows a security analyst to track the origin of a phishing email, including the sender's IP address, mail relay servers, return path, and SPF, DKIM, DMARC validation results. This is the most direct and effective technique for identifying the source of a malicious email. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Packet capture captures network traffic but won't provide historical data about a specific email unless captured at the moment it was received. C. SSL inspection. This is used to analyze encrypted traffic, not for inspecting email metadata or identifying senders. D. Reverse engineering. This applies to analyzing malware or malicious attachments, not identifying the source of an email message itself. Therefore, the correct answer is A. An analyst wants to ensure that users only leverage web-based software that has been pre-approved by the organization. Which of the following should be deployed? The correct answer is B. Allow listing. Allow listing is the practice of explicitly permitting only approved software or services, blocking everything else by default. To ensure users only use pre-approved web-based software, Allow listing is the most effective and secure approach. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Block listing. Block listing denies access to known bad services, but it allows everything else by default, which doesn't meet the goal of restricting use to only pre-approved tools. C. Gray listing. Typically used in email filtering, it temporarily rejects unknown senders to see if they retry. It's not applicable to controlling software use. D. Webhooks. Webhooks are used to automate communication between systems or applications, not for enforcing software usage policies. Therefore, the correct answer is B. During a cybersecurity incident, one of the web servers at the perimeter network was affected by ransomware.
Which of the following actions should be performed immediately? The correct answer is C. Quarantine the server. The immediate action during a ransomware incident on a perimeter web server is to quarantine the server from the network to prevent the ransomware from spreading to other systems while preserving the server for investigation and recovery. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Shut down the server. Shutting down can cause data loss and may hinder forensic investigation. Isolation without powering off is preferred initially. B. Re-image the server. Re-imaging is part of recovery but should be done after containment and investigation. D. Update the OS to latest version. Patching is a preventive measure, not an immediate response during an active ransomware incident. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An organization recently changed its BC and DR plans. Which of the following would best allow for the incident response team to test the changes without any impact to the business? The correct answer is A. Perform a tabletop drill based on previously identified incident scenarios. A tabletop drill allows the incident response team to walk through the updated BC and DR plans in a discussion-based, simulated environment. This method tests the plans without any real-world impact on business operations. Why the other options are incorrect? B. Simulate an incident by shutting down power to the primary data center. This is a live drill that risks disrupting business operations and should only be done after plans are well tested. C. Migrate active workloads from the primary data center to the secondary location. This is a real operational move, not a test, and could impact production if not managed carefully. D. Compare the current plan to lessons learned from previous incidents. This is part of plan review and improvement, not an actual test of the plan's effectiveness. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Security analysts review logs on multiple servers on a daily basis. Which of the following implementations will give the best central visibility into the events occurring throughout the corporate environment without logging into the servers individually? The correct answer is B. Configure the servers to forward logs to a seam. Configuring servers to forward log to a SIEM system provides centralized, real-time visibility into events across the corporate environment. Analysts can monitor, search, and correlate events without logging into individual servers. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Deploy a database to aggregate the logging. A database alone doesn't provide the correlation, alerting, and analysis features of a SIEM. C. Share the log directory on each server to allow local access. This requires manual access to each server's logs, increasing overhead and complexity. D. Automate the emailing of logs to the analysts. Emailing logs is inefficient, prone to delays, and hard to manage for large volumes of data. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Following a recent security incident, the Chief Information Security Officer is concerned with improving visibility and reporting of malicious actors in the environment. The goal is to reduce the time to prevent lateral movement and potential data exfiltration. Which of the following techniques will best achieve the improvement? The correct answer is B. Mean time to respond. Mean time to respond measures how quickly the security team takes action after detecting an incident. Reducing MTTR is crucial to prevent lateral movement and data exfiltration by containing threats rapidly and effectively. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Mean time to detect. This is important for identifying incidents but doesn't directly measure how quickly response actions stop threat progression. C. Mean time to remediate. This refers to the time taken to fully fix and recover, which is longer than the initial response and containment phase. D. Service level agreement uptime. This is related to system availability, not incident detection or response times. Therefore, the correct answer is B. After identifying a threat, a company has decided to implement a patch management program to remediate vulnerabilities. Which of the following risk management principles is the company exercising? The correct answer is C. Mitigate. By implementing a patch management program, the company is actively reducing the risk associated with vulnerabilities. 
This is an example of risk mitigation, where controls are put in place to lessen the likelihood or impact of a threat. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Transfer. Risk transfer involves shifting risk to a third party, such as through insurance. Not applicable here. B. Accept. Risk acceptance means acknowledging the risk without taking action, which is not the case. D. Avoid. Risk avoidance means eliminating the risk entirely by stopping the activity causing it, which patching does not do. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A security analyst discovers an ongoing ransom attack while investigating a phishing email. The analyst downloads a copy of the file from the email and isolates the affected workstation from the network. Which of the following activities should the analyst perform next? The correct answer is C. Acquire a bit-level image of the affected workstation. After isolating the infected system, the analyst should acquire a forensic bit-level image of the workstation. This preserves the exact state of the system for detailed analysis and evidence collection without altering the original data. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Wipe the computer and reinstall software. This is part of recovery but should only be done after forensic imaging and investigation. B. Shut down the email server and quarantine it from the network. The email server may not be compromised. Shutting it down prematurely could disrupt operations. D. Search for other mail users who have received the same file. This is important for containment, but preserving the affected system state takes precedence. Therefore, the correct answer is C. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.